King's Path to Success with your host, The King. I hope everyone been enjoying life and, you know, as usual, hoping that you're living positive, you're doing the right things, and maybe I could innovate or motivate you to make changes or better yourself at things that's meaningful to you. Um, I've been enjoying my week, and I always enjoy my time coming back to talk to you guys. Uh, to talk to you about different ways that we can all help ourselves or beneficial advocacies or help that you have around your community. Today, we're going to talk about family, um, building a team, and having a foundation that supports the goals that you have set and established for your life. So what I first would like to talk about is, you know, foundation is key. To, to a lot of moves, a lot of plans, a lot of goals that we have set inside of our lives, such as making sure, as I said before in other episodes, you always make sure you're surrounded with the, you know, with the best nouns that you could surround yourself with, meaning people, place, and things that can help uplift you or be beneficial to you on your journey. You do not want to bring or surround obstacles towards the path that you are trying to set for yourself. You don't want to create problems or interference or distractions with people who don't have the same objective to see what's best for you or do what's best for you. And that's something we all learn personally because you actually can't identify these people until you actually start your path and head in the direction that you would like to head to throughout your life. So on the journey, you know, you're going to encounter friends, you're going to encounter different friends because they're going to change. You're going to notice your friends change because at your starting point, when you decide to have a vision and you decided the direction you want to go, you are surrounded with a certain group of people. But what you notice is as you pursue your dream and start heading towards that goal, those who do not have your best interests and those who do not believe in your journey seems the the kind of dwindle out the picture. They kind of sit back, you know, because they're not pushing your brand or they're not trying to praise you. Because a lot of times in life, we're surrounded by people that's happy for you as long as you're not doing better than they are. And when they seem that you're doing better than they are, a lot of times they have an actual mental or emotional competition that takes place against you that you could be completely oblivious to and unaware of. So the first thing you want to do is identify the people that should be in your life. Like, and you could do that. I ain't going to say it's easy because it's tough because we all have bonds. We all have, all have history, which is um, identify who has your best interests, who loves you for who you are, the good, the bad, and ugly, who believes in you even at the moments that you do not believe in yourself and you have self-doubt? Who is the type of people that motivate you to do the things that's positive and beneficial inside your life? Even if you disagree with what they say would be love you enough to be honest with you when they think that it will cause a conflict because the small confrontation you might have with them over opinion means nothing to what they're trying to push you to become because they might see your greatness and you may not yet. You're trying to figure it out. But you can identify the people who's pushing for you and rooting for you on your team that believes that you are more than what your current situation is. And those people come with a special appreciation. The reason they come with a special appreciation because half the time you're arguing with them or there's a confrontation or some form of debate is because they see potential in you that you maybe don't even see in yourself. And sometimes we got to take a step back and we got to understand, are we making those right decisions? Are we around the right type of people? Are we being beneficial to others and others being beneficial to us by 
uh, occupying our time that we spend with each other? Is there a value to the relationships that we gain in life, meaning um, relationships as friendships, relationships as family members, relationships as intimacy, or the partner that you choose to spend your life with? Are these the right people that is part of the puzzle? A lot of us have children, wives, or husbands, whatever floats your boat, male or female, and we all you know, depend on that person for certain things because the level of intimacy that we feel with them people is usually the most vulnerable most of us will ever be in life. So those are the moments where, you know, we open up to a person about when we really don't feel like ourselves, when we feel unmotivated, when we feel unloved, when we feel that life is crushing us and it's hard to take. If Is that person that you established in your life able to spread peace and positivity to you and encourage you to overcome that obstacle because you cannot fight in this game of life with a partner who's not willing to fight with you. You cannot fight in this game of life with friends that's not fighting with you. You cannot be a member of a group of friends that make decisions based off their own selfish needs and that is not based off of what's beneficial to me and those around me. A lot of us make selfish decisions that cause negative reactions and consequences because of our own selfish need and not thinking of others and what they might go through, what, what they might feel. Uh, we don't prioritize other people when it's something that we need ourselves. It becomes a selfish way of thinking and it becomes a selfish way of living. You know, uh, some of us feel if they don't have an entourage or fans rooting for them, they might feel that they uh, might be a little lost and not sure about how to go about things. But when you look back, you always have purpose. So when you have children, you, you got to start to understand the path that you're making has nothing to do with friends or family members. The path that you're making is the legacy that you are leaving for your children. It is the role model that you are showing your children. It is the fight and willpower to overcome obstacles and emotional boundaries and show vulnerability because you actually love something more than yourself that should motivate you and drive you to get through any moment in life that seems like a brick wall. Because there's things in this world that can motivate you and you got to identify those triggers that push you. Sometimes you have to get uncomfortable to be comfortable or you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable to change a situation. It takes change to make change. That's mental, physical and emotional. And, and when you get to that point and you believe and, and what you're doing and you understand your purpose and you know yourself inside and out. That, my friends, is the start of you building a beautiful foundation for you to create any project or any goal that you may set inside your life. We're going to take a small intermission, but just go get something to drink. Come right back to your seat and you'll be right back with the king. I see you back here at the king's path of success. Peace, gods and earths.
Hey, gods and earths, I hope everyone's looking good, feeling good. You are back with the king. Um, you know, we were talking about foundations before we uh, went on break and we took that little intermission. I hope you grabbed something to drink or a snack, and I hope you enjoy in today's conversation. Uh, we talked about identifying the people, places, and things that's around us. And, you know, we're going to touch a little bit more on the subject before we skip over it. So we talked a lot in the first segment about the people, how to build relationships, identifying relationships, and the type of people that need to be around you. And now we're going to talk a little about, little bit about um, environments. You know, per, like I said before, prior, people, places, or things. Um, so now we're going to talk about the places. Now, identifying these places is a, a very serious thing because when I say identifying places, it's because say you don't come from the best background. Say you do not have the friends, the family that makes the best decisions that's for you. Say um, you're very comfortable with the type of neighborhood that you grew up in or the people that you grew up around, but yet at this point in life, have you seen the benefits of being inside these environments, around these people, or standing in these places, or hanging in these places. Now, like I said, they all go together. People, places, and things. So, give you an example of being with the wrong people in the wrong place. What exactly could go wrong? Um, it would be a scenario such as, say you're hanging out with a friend from childhood. You knew him your entire life. Y'all guys have been buddies. Your, your, your mom is his mom. His mom is your mom. Dad is your dad. You know, the whole, we're brothers, we're sisters, all of that. The whole spill. Now say your brother or your friend was having a problem with someone on the other side of town. And you were oblivious to their personal problems that they have with other people, but today you ran into your buddy, you know he don't live right. You know the decisions he make in his life is a bit iffy. You know his consequences to every action because every action has a reaction. But this is your brother, this is your pal, it's your, 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 your main right hand man and you wanna hang out today, you wanna, you wanna get into some, you wanna talk about a whole bunch of nothing because obviously if you spent years with this person and you haven't gained no benefits or been pushed to change your situation, that your whole relationship has been based off of surface uh, and materialistic uh, attributes. So now today you're hanging with your buddy, you see him standing on the street, you see him, you pull your car over and you, hey, how you doing, what's up bro? How everything in life going? I was thinking about you the other day. I knew we were just going to get up. I was going to call you. You're having a great time talking to your old friend that you, once again, recognized do not make the best decisions, do not hang in the best places, and is not looking to be beneficial to nobody other than themselves. But you accept their benefits because you are still making poor decisions. So maybe it's, I'm going to drink with him, smoke with him, Maybe I'm going to spend all day out here talking about old times and doing nothing with myself. But to you, it don't seem like a big thing until now, same scenario, you're hanging out, you're talking to your old friend, you are loving the day, it looks beautiful outside. And now a car drives by, four shots let off, and you're the person who got shot by this anonymous person that you never known or had a problem with. Now you think, Oh, that happens, or or that ain't me. But truth be told, it don't usually happen on a normal basis because everyone in a sequence is oblivious. You may be oblivious, but say your friend knew he had problems with this man weeks ago, or maybe they got into an argument at a bar or a club or whatever the situation is. Now what's happening is retaliation took place and you happen to be at the wrong place, at the wrong time, with the wrong type of people for the vision that you have for your life. 
you have became a casualty of war because you couldn't resist hanging in an area that has never brought you productivity, hanging in an area that have never taught you to be constructive, hanging in an area that never been beneficial to you in your life and the best interest of your family and your loved ones. But you will blame everyone else. It is a backwards way of thinking and a backwards train of thought. You know, half of us, including myself, has been in trouble before. And it took me a long time to realize um, we're quick with the, with, the, with the snitch word. Don't tell, you are a snitch. Snitch, snitches get stitches. And, and you train yourself to believe this stuff because you wanna make yourself oblivious to if I was making better decisions and hanging around better people and being in better environments, then there would be nothing for no one to snitch on me about. That is something that we create, the situation we create by letting a noun destroy the person that we are meant to be. We can't always point the blame on everyone else. Sometimes you have to accept, maybe I'm a, I'm a mess up, but I can fix it. Maybe I am making non-beneficial decisions and maybe I am poorly looking at situations. And maybe it just feels better to me to blame somebody else because I got caught up in a situation that I knew wasn't best for me. I need you to think about them type of things because when you start to care about yourself and you start to care about your well-being and you start to care about the people around you, the first thing you recognize is you are precious cargo and you need to take care of your precious cargo and treat it as such. We're gonna take one more intermission. You'll be right back with the king. And I hope that over this time of a break that my thoughts sit on your mind and marinate and it change or influence a way that you do not see that you think that is beneficial for you. So give me a small break and we'll be right back with the king. How you doing, gods and nerfs? Welcome back to King's Path of Success. Once again, you hear what your host, the King. Now, we had a good discussion today. We talked about various subjects. Uh, like I said, this was the conversation about the nouns, the person, place, or things that is critical that you identify in your life from you making poor decisions or making better decisions. So things, when I say things is Sometimes we come up with a way or was raised with a way of having that non-beneficial train of thought. Uh, thinking in ways that don't actually bring value to us. So I say things. When I was younger, you know, I, I got in a lot of trouble. I made a lot of poor decisions. I, I hung around people that didn't necessarily have the best, the best interest for me. Um, took me a long time to see that because you know you latch on to what you love and you latch on to what you're comfortable with so a lot of ways that I came up with and a lot of mindset a lot of the influence of my mindset became more of a survivor thing because when you when you come up certain ways say you come up in poverty you come up with a struggle what happens is generationally you get taught the techniques that is used to apply to survive in that situation. And without realizing it, you have not developed an actual skill to get out the situation. You have actually learned how to survive and, and be content 
inside of a situation. So things is, when I say things, it's, it's things that you have learned and taught yourself that actually do not bring out the best of yourself. Such as if you come from poverty, you're struggling, you might learn how to sell drugs. You might learn how to rob. You might learn how to lie, how to cheat, how to, how to create situations that could actually make someone else downfall your, your benefits. You know, we spend a lot of time manipulating and controlling and trying to stay comfortable with ourselves in our own situation, but selling drugs isn't cool. Robbing isn't cool. Cheating is not cool. Uh, manipulating people is not cool. Beating on other people until they are unconscious is not cool. The reason I say that is because nothing cool comes from these things. And even though selling drugs seem cool, because that's what it is, it seemed cool. It's a quick way to make money. You like seeing jewelry, nice cars, or you like seeing pretty women chase you, or you think it gives you some form of entitlement or power over those inside your communities who's less educated or not as strong as you. It is a subliminal way of bullying because the people who's looking to have a nice community and a nice neighborhood are scared to approach you to talk about it because you have built the reputation of hurting others. Being identified as a stereotype inside your own community, being a statistic inside your community and not adding no value and half of you are oblivious that the other people that you're friends with and known and grown up with once they children to grow up in a community that's safe for them to grow up in and your own friends are the statistics that make your community unsafe. Half the time there's a shooting in a neighborhood, you know the person that did the shooting. Half the time someone's killed in your neighborhood, you know the person that got killed. Half the time cops are swarming a bodega in front of the corner stores, you know the people that the cops are swarming, raiding, and arresting by your local corner store. But we have so much guts that we don't use them when we're supposed to. You would never go up, or people do not go up to their own friends, their own family, and tell them, you don't need to be out here. This makes my neighborhood look terrible. The reason people could stereotype who we are living in this area is because how y'all stand in front of a store. The reason my children can't run outside and be safe when I'm not home is because problems you accumulate with the decisions you make in your personal life, standing in front of this store, arguing with other dealers about who money belongs to who, when you're making illegal money, arguing about a neighborhood that you don't even own. Half of us rep neighborhoods and call it our streets and they say, this is my hood and it's not your hood. You don't own a house on that hood. You don't own a street in that hood. Your name is not on no building. Your name is not on no street. You have no deed in your life. You have never owned a thing, but for some reason you're gonna shoot someone today because this neighborhood belongs to you and the people who own it don't even know who the heck you are. Think about things like that. You are throwing your whole life and risking everything you have to disrespect someone else's property in reality. There ain't no difference between you and somebody trespassing and destroying what you have grown and built over your life. So today word of the day would be mindfulness. I would like you to think things through before you talk or act on the things that run through your mind. And is it really worth it? Don't you find it crazy if you got killed and you got children at home because you was beefing with somebody over what you call your block and then your child grows up and realize that this was never my father block. He never owned anything out here. And he's beefing with another neighborhood over beef that started 
way before he was even alive to the point he don't even know why the actual problem exists other than where each other live. I would like us as a people to get better than that, to think stronger. Change your mind, you change your life. Now I'm about to let you go, but I hope, once again, like I always say, I hope some message that I said motivate or innovate or got through you enough to marinate to get you focused on the goals that I know that you can accomplish. But I'm gonna let you go. Like I said, this is the King's Path of Success and you was talking with the King. I will see you next week. Peace, gods and earths.